Hey you guys, welcome to my channel. I'm Pharmacy Tech Love. This is where you learn everything that you need to know about how to be a pharmacy technician. You see me. Let's get into it real quick. Okay, as you all know, I'm Pharmacy Tech Love. If you're new to my channel, make sure you subscribe, make sure you hit the bell. When you hit the bell, make sure you hit the little bell that's in quotations. Again, I'm Pharmacy Tech Love. If you stumbled on my channel, this is nothing but about pharmacy, how to become certified, how to gain other certifications, and just how to be a good technician and how to hopefully enjoy your job. But hopefully you're, you're, you're growing, um, you're, and if you are in school, hopefully you're studying. Because if you're not studying, then what are you doing, okay? What are you doing? Okay, this, um, this video is going to be about the Controlled Substance Diversion Prevention Certificate. But first, I do wanna let you know that I've already been over a couple of these certificates already. I've been over the Advanced Certified Pharmacy Technician Certificate, the Medication History Certificate, the Technician Product Verification Certificate, the Hazardous Drug Management Certificate, the billing and reimbursement certificate. Now the one that I don't know anything about yet, don't know anything about, is the immunization certificate. But it does say, but it does say that, we, that when we receive this certificate, it is going to demonstrate that we have the knowledge and skill to safely administer vaccination to patients. <coughs> so basically, that means that us, yes we, we, the pharmacy technicians, will be giving vaccinations pretty soon. What y'all think about that? What y'all think about that? Okay, anywho. So let's get into the video. Let's get into the video. Let me find it one more time. This is the Controlled Substance Diversion Prevention Certificate. Okay, so let's talk about it. This is going to demonstrate your knowledge of controlled substances, diversion prevention strategies, and DEA requirements. All right, so let's, let's just read into it. You can find this on the PTCB website, okay, you guys? You can find it on the website. This is all public information. Um, if you don't feel like reading it, <laughs> I, I, guess, I guess just listen up, okay? All right. Knowing how to prevent the diversion of controlled substances leads to safer patient care and addresses a greater public health need to helping um, keep communities safe. This is my first time reading this. The Controlled Substance Diversion Prevention Certificate requires completion of the first formal training for technicians in this area. Earning this certificate demonstrates your advanced competency and commitment to patient, pharmacy, and community safety by minimizing the impact of ongoing, of the ongoing opioid crisis. And we all, we all should know by now that we have, a, we have a war on drugs, okay? Complete the Controlled Substance Diversion Prevention Certificate to demonstrate your competency in these lists of things that I'm going to list right now. You will learn consequences of diversion, signs of impaired healthcare workers, areas of vulnerability in procurement, preparation and dispensing prescri prescribing, administration and waste removal processes. You will learn types and functions of security control measures, devices and software to detect and prevent diversion. Uh, DEA requirements for registration, record keeping, and, co and conducting physical inventories. You will learn to identify suspicious data patterns, product tampering, and fraudulent prescriptions. Okay, let's go about um, um, the eligibility requirements. A candidate must hold an active PTCB certified certification, okay, certified pharmacy technician certification, and complete a PTCB recognized controlled substance diversion pre prevention education training program, okay? So that's what, you'll have to complete the training program, program before you receive the certificate, of course, okay? Please note that additional PTCB recognized education training programs for controlled substance diversion prevention Will be, will be added to the list as they become available, okay? Now, this, this also tells about um, how, that this is a step forward towards your advanced certified pharmacy technician certificate. And I have a video about that, and you can just, you know, look through my videos, and it's, it's, it's well titled on how to become 
a advanced certified pharmacy technician, okay? So I'm not I'm not gonna read that. But if you need me to, you know what, why not? Active uh, certified pharmacy technicians who have completed at least four of these certificates that I listed earlier in the video, um, and three years of work experience will be eligible to earn a certified pharmacy technician advanced credential. Okay, all right. Okay, now moving right along. The cost to apply for the controlled substance diversion uh, prevention certificate is $89. Being an early applicant means you'll save money. You'll save $30 for the first three months, pay $59 when you apply by December, sec uh, December 21st, 2020. Okay, so if you're watching this video and this is before December 21st of 2020, you can receive a discount in order to receive this certificate if that's what you would like to do, okay? Now here's how to apply and to and to schedule this um, in order to apply to take the test for this certificate. First, you're gonna log into your PTCB account. <coughs> As pharmacy technicians, we all should have a PTCB account because there's so many resources on the PTCB website. I mean, it's just, it's just amazing how many resources are there. First, like I said, you're gonna log into the P into your PTCB account. Visit PTCB's Credential Center. You'll see like a little box that says Credential Center. That's gonna be within your PTCB account and apply, okay? Once your application is approved, you will receive an email with your authorization to schedule the exam, okay? The Controlled Substance Diversion Prevention Certificate Exam is administered year-round at more than 1,400 Pearson Professional Centers nationwide, including more than 100 military on-base sites. Now, this is how you're going to prepare for the exam. Be sure to review the exam blueprint as part of, of your exam preparation. So I'm gonna tell you like what percent um, of what area is going to be covered on the, uh, in order to achieve this or obtain this certificate, okay? So controlled substance diversion is 9% of the test. What's included in that is, uh, is consequences of diversion, infection uh, risk to patients, organizational liability, fines, indictments, fraud charges, loss of job or license, okay? Another set, still, still under the controlled substance diversion, that 9%, I'll let you know when I leave out of that. Another part of that is signs of impairment uh, healthcare workers, including their mood changes and agitation, diluted pupils, sudden decline in job performance. That's a telltale sign that somebody might be dipping into the controlled substances, okay? All right, motivation to divert control substance addiction, financial gain, and recreation. Now, out of that, let's go into another section. That was 9% of what's gonna be on the test. Let's talk about what's gonna be a 30% that's gonna be on the test. It's gonna be control substance diversion prevention form is uh, program is 30% of the test. Now, this is going to include areas of vulner vulnerability in procurement, preparation, dispensing, prescribing, administration, and, and waste removal processes. Elements of a comprehensive and effective controlled substance diversion prevention program, types and functions of security control measures, devices, and software to detect and prevent diversions such as locking, uh, locking storage, cameras, I don't know what ADCs are, maybe you guys know, and analytic softwares. Um, high risk areas of the pharmacy, such as anesthesia areas, control substance vault, the IV room, the wheel call, and the receiving. Uh, also, you will learn the chain of custody methods. Examples of that is regulation of access control, presence of witnesses for signing delivery sheets, use of pamper evident containers, okay? All right, what's going to be 38% of this test? Okay, let me go back down are DEA requirements. DEA registration requirements, examples of that is power of attorney or renewal. Procedures to validate DEA numbers, examples of that is formula components, parts of the DEA number. Contents, appropriate usage, and record keeping for DEA Form 222. DEA controlled substance ordering system. Contents, 
appropriate usage and record keeping for DEA form 41. Contents, appropriate usage and record keeping for DEA form 106. Knowledge of DEA controlled, excuse me, knowledge of DEA scheduled medications and which are at high risk for diversion. DEA requirements for conducting physical inventories and record keeping. Contents, appropriate usage and record keeping for DEA form 107. Actions to take during a robbery and theft event. Procedures for sales of controlled substances and restrictions to OTCs over the counter. Um, examples of that is pseudofedrine. Okay, Leave, I'm leaving out of um, I'm leaving out of DEA requirements. That was 38% of the of the test. Now let's go to surveillance and investigation. This is going to be 23% of the test. Okay. Number one, suspicious data pattern patterns, examples, waste buddy, night nice shift sedation, cancel removes, pocket inventory. Okay. Anomalous, anomalous usage. Another set is surveillance, surveillance practices and technique. Examples of that is reconciliation of invoices to purchase, to purchase history reports. A checklist to verify all paperwork is complete. Record audits. Records audits, excuse me. Sign in, sign of product tampering and or alteration. Examples of that is vial tops that don't twist easily. Uh, chip tablets, drug um, sampling. And the last, sign of, of uh, sign of and methods to detect fraudulent prescriptions, okay? Now, these are all areas that you will be testing. I'm going to just run back through that real quick. You have 9% controlled substance diversion, 30% controlled substance diversion prevention program, 38% uh, DEA requirements, 23% surveillance and investigation, and that is all, okay? Now, we're going to talk about how to prepare for the controlled substance prevention certification exam. This question is how do I exam how do I change my appointment time? Exam appointments must be rescheduled at least one business day before the scheduled appointment by contacting Pearson View. Okay? Another question. Can I withdraw my application? No. Your application for your controlled substance diversion prevention certificate cannot be withdrawn. Okay. How do I submit an emergency withdrawal? We know personal emergencies happen. If an emergency occurs on the day of the exam appointment, you can submit an emergency withdrawal request form. Okay. The next question, am I eligible? To be eligible, you must hold an active PTCB Certified Pharmacy Technician and complete a PTCB Recognized Controlled Substance Diversion Prevention Education Training Program. So you have to be certified and you have to complete the program. All right, let's keep moving, let's keep moving. Let's talk about the exam. The Controlled Substance Diversion Prevention Certificate Exam is a computer-based exam. Like I said, you guys, Follow me, go to the website and just follow me reading this, okay? Okay, all right, I'm just feeling goofy today. I don't know why, I think it's because my wig. Anyway, um, the Controlled Substance Diversion Prevention Certificate Program is a computer-based exam with 80 multiple choice questions. Be prepared to commit two hours for the exam, 10 minutes tutorial and survey, so one hour and a 50 minute exam, okay? exam day requirements okay so be you know come prepared don't don't be that person that leaves their id at home or leaves their glasses at home or you know come prepared exam day requirements arrive at the testing pearson view center 30 minutes or before uh, your appointment bring an approved form of identification that matches your name as it appears on your ptcb account you will not be allowed to take the exam without proper identification. Be sure to review more details about what to expect and what is required in the candidate handbook. 
and there is a orange link right here, okay, that you can click on that if you need to review the candidate guidebook. I think I had said handbook, okay? All right, uh, testing accommodations. Candidates who require testing accommodations must request these accommodations during the application process. Accommodations that are reasonable and consistent with the American uh, Americans with Disabilities Act will be provided at PT, by PTCB at no additional cost to candidates. Candidates who need medical equipment into the testing room need to request an accommodation if the item is not on the list of items or of allowed items, okay? On exam day, the question is, what identification do I need? You must present a valid, unexpired government issued photo ID. The name on the ID must match your PTCB account. What are the test center rules? There are rules about cell phones, calculators, jewelry, and more. And you can review the Pearson View test center rules before you take your exam. Just don't wear any jewelry. Don't bring any calculators. Simple. Don't bring your, take your cell phone inside, no. What if I need testing accommodations? Testing accommodations must be requested when you apply, okay? Okay, let's continue on. Let's talk about the scoring, the scoring. Exams will be scored in the coming months and only those who achieve a passing score will earn the Control Substance Diversion Prevention Certificate. Exam results will follow, excuse me, uh, exam results will be available three to four months following September 21st 2020 launch of this certificate program. Because the Controlled Substance Diversion Prevention Assessment Based Certificate Program is new, scoring will be delayed. PTCB will apply the same rigorous process to determine the passing score for the Controlled Substance Diversion Prevention Exam after multiple candidates have tested. Digital badges. Upon earning your credentials, sorry, Upon earning your credentials, you will receive an email invitation from the Acclaim platform via badge at ptcb.org with instructions for claiming your badge and setting up your account. This digital badge will contain information describing your credential, including how you earned it. You can display the badge on your in your email signature, electronic files of a resume, and on social media sites like LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter. Let's talk about certificates. Once your official score is available, you can download your certificate through the Acclaim platform. Now here are just some more general questions that people tend to ask. What if I fail my exam? You can retake it once your exam results are available within your PTCB account. When will I get my score? Okay, I think I've read this one. Because your Controlled Substance Diversion Prevention Certificate Program is new, scoring will be delayed. PTCB will allow the same rigorous process to determine this passing score for the Controlled Substance Diversion Prevention Exam after multiple candidates have tested. Okay, okay um, how do I receive my certificate? Once you have earned your certificate, you will be, al you will be awarded a digital badge, and you can download a printable copy of your achievement. And really, I think that's it. Okay, how do I renew this? This certificate program does not need renewal. That's like the best thing ever. You know, we don't have to, to keep up continued education hours for this. It doesn't need renewing. It's just, it's just yours, you know? It, that just feels good, it's just yours. Okay, this is just a, a few extra uh, documents that they put down here, and I'm just gonna read it to you. A uh, quick assessment to additional documents you may need during your PTCB uh, Controlled Substance Diversion Prevention Certificate process. Download the necessary documents and submit the completed form as required. And if you need testing accommodation forms, it's right down on the bottom there. I don't even know if you can see this. It may be a big glare, okay? But this is how you will achieve this certificate. And again, this certificate is called the Controlled Substance Diversion Prevention Certificate. And this is just one of many. 
of the certificates that PTCB offers now. There are several certificates. I, and I, I think I listed those to you. And if I didn't list those to you at the first beginning of the video, just, just go down through the list of videos that I have and you will see it. And like I said, the immunization certificate is coming. Uh, that's really interesting to me. Um, I can't believe that we pharmacy technicians are about to start giving immunization shots. That is, you know, are, are they preparing us for COVID, you know, so that the world can become vaccinated? You know, I, I, you know, I, I really have to think, of, you know, like to think about that. Uh, but this is more in, re well, I, I, I don't even know if I can even say this is just in retail. Uh, would this be in the hospital setting too? But I can't, I can't see it being in the hospital setting considering that there are nurses, you know, available to do that. But who, who knows? You know, we could, we could set up something, you know, outside and, and give you immunization shots. You know, um, if, if this epidemic continues or gets worse, you know, push comes to shove, we'll have to do what we have to do. All right. Y'all have a wonderful evening. And thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for sticking with me. I know I haven't posted in a while. If you made it to the end of this video, I just want to say thank you. I work a lot because I am trying to pay my home off. My daughter will be going to college soon. I have to put this girl through college. And I just like to buy things off Amazon. Bye, y'all.